Anyways, um, what was the purpose of this video? Um, I just lost my whole train of thought. It's fine. Um, um, hi. Hello! Don't I look green? Okay, I'm looking a little green now. Am I insane? Oh my god. Do we have- Ooh! We could have it purple in here. <gasps> You guys would never watch me. It's actually kind of calming. Um, all right, we're back to fo fo fo. That's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, if it's not, get fucking wrecked. Maybe a different angle would help. I don't think it would. Like, if I'm being completely honest, you know what? <laughs> Hang on. Does that work? Whatever. You're. That's where you are. So this is the final. This is. This is it. We're, you're staying here. Hello, welcome back to another video. I know, I know, I know. Today we are talking about poison in ancient warfare. This is a very interesting topic, especially considering that poison and warfare by themselves are very interesting topics, but when you put them together, whoo, say less. What a combo. So did ancient peoples, ancient warriors use poison? Did they coat their weapons in poison? Did they utilize toxins against enemies in warfare? The answer is yes, they did. This is not something to be proud of though. Don't, don't applaud. The ancient opinion on uh, poison in warfare was a bit mixed, to say the least. There were several very well-known and admired figures in ancient history and myth who were thought possibly to have used poison at one point in their careers. I have read from secondary sources, you I know. Odysseus poisoned his arrows, Achilles coated his spear in poison, and Heracles accidentally shot Chiron, Ooh. the centaur, with a poisoned arrow made from hydra venom. Anyways, what was I saying? Don't praise these people if they use poison. The ancient perspective and morality of using poison in warfare was a little sketchy. I mean, uh, like, it's kind of hard to pin down. It's sort of like asking a Star Wars fan if they liked the sequels. It's, I mean, you don't know what you're gonna get. Sometimes we're all right with it. Usually when it's a last resort kind of thing, when it's a, a, a you or me situation, and it's, it, I'm sorry, but it's gonna be me. Sometimes, most times, we don't like it. We're not a fan. It wasn't... I mean, you don't really want to be known for using poison. That's not what you want. Uh, you don't want your name slapped all over as, uh, you know, whatever, Lucius the Poisoner. Not great. Kind of a dirty thing to do, uh, if we're being frank. Not saying the ancients played fair and honorably all the time. That is... Mm, that's definitely not what I'm saying. It's very much dependent um, on the circumstances. If you're uh, an ancient contemporary, we enjoy a little craftiness, a little slyness, a good plan. Odysseus for example. The ancients liked Odysseus, for the most part. They enjoyed his cleverness, his outside-of-the-box thinking. He was, he was, for many, an inspiration. You know, his, his military strategi- strategize- stra mm. Forget it. His military planning, warfare tactics were, were admired for their cleverness and, um, they weren't, they were sort of edging on maybe being a little unadmirable, uh, maybe being a little dirty, but they weren't quite there yet. For the most part, Odysseus was an admirable figure in Greek myth. However, he is an archer. As an archer, he was respected and admired for his aim and ability, but not so much for courage, right? So archers stay back and they don't throw themselves into battle. Odysseus in the ancient mind, I would say he's, I would say he's A tier. You know who's S tier? Achilles. You know who's S tier? Heracles. Alexander the Great. Why? What do they all have in common? They are warriors. <laughs> Undeniable warriors. They are frontline, battle-hardened, skilled, brave warriors. They're not, for the most part, for argument's sake, they're not known widely for, for using underhanded tactics to get ahead. And yes, I am gonna skip over the part where Heracles and Achilles supposedly poisoned their weapons. They are just the best at what they do. They are willing to risk their lives and go into direct combat. You know what? arguably the biggest coward in Greek myth was Paris. He was an archer. No hate on archers. I adore archers. But to the ancients, you were a little less than great. Technically, in the Iliad, we don't know how Achilles died. But later in succeeding myths, Paris did shoot Achilles in the heel with an arrow. Ovid says this in the Metamorphoses. There have been scholars who've uh, said that Paris's arrow was poisoned, and that's how Achilles died from his wound, which does make sense. So if you're an archer, that doesn't mean you're not valuable, you're not respected, you're just not Achilles, right? And if you use poison on your arrows, that's not ideal. <laughs> um, that's pretty cowardly, and that just compounds the fact that you're not a frontline warrior, but you're willing to stand back in safety and take down a man 
with poison. That's sort of the general view on um, poisoned arrows in antiquity. Poison itself wasn't something that was generally liked. I know that sounds odd. It wasn't something divine or gifted from above. It actually, a lot of it came from the underworld. So that might tell you a little something about how the ancients viewed poison. There is a little passage in Ovid's Metamorphoses and Pliny's Natural History that details how during Heracles' 12th labor, in which he drags Cerberus, the three-headed guard dog of Hades, out of the underworld. And Cerberus is so dazzled by the light of the sun that he barks with all three of his heads and sprinkles the grass with white foam from his maw. And this turns into the poisonous plant known as aconite or wolfsbane. It also has a thousand other names, if you care. This was actually said to be around Ephyra, which was an ancient city, and in Ephyra was said to be the Necromantion of Acheron. This was a temple devoted to Hades and Persephone. This temple was said to be at the meeting point of three rivers from the underworld, the Acheron, Phlegathon, and Cocytus. And it was known to be the entrance to the underworld. At this entrance, there were other poisonous plants that thrived, such as black hellebore and nightshade, and they thrived here because of being so close to the entrance uh, of the underworld, which emitted noxious vapors. Who knew? So aconite is not a fun way to die, to put it lightly. There are testaments to the effects of aconite poisoning from the ancients. For example, Elian says in his work on animals that this herb also grew next to the Nile, and when a wolf treads upon it, he dies in convulsions. There's also another reference to aconite in his work, in which he states that if a leopard just so happens to unknowingly consume aconite, it can then lick some human excrement and preserve its life. So a literal eat shit or die situation. If you do happen to get some aconite poisoning, you can expect to feel some tingling at first. Not too bad. That's the first red flag though. The second red flag is your whole nervous system ceases up and you begin vomiting uncontrollably. After which your limbs proceed to go numb and you die, which isn't very cash money. Henbane wasn't great either. None of these are great. I'm not I'm not gonna lie and say that these were great ways to die. I really wouldn't recommend getting poisoned if you can avoid it. Anyways, henbane causes extremely violent seizures, psychosis, so hallucinations, which I would imagine are also pretty violent, and finally death. USAP was also used as a poison on weapons, and this is supposedly pretty fast compared to uh, other poisons in that it affects your heart. It suppresses your heartbeat. Other known forms of poison came from animals um, Snakes were really very well known for their venom. The purple snake described by Elian lived in Asia and had a purple body with a white head Weirdly enough, it did not bite its victims. It did not have fangs. It threw up on them. Same. Wherever you get puked on the skin would begin to decay. This is getting exciting. And it's it's a toss up whether you're you're gonna die fast or slow, but you're probably gonna die is the bad news that I have for you. I am now going to give you a description on how to harvest the venom from said purple snake in case you ever need to know that and the effects of, of that poison. Therefore, when caught, men hang it up by the tail and naturally it has its head hanging down, looking at the ground and below the creature's mouth, they place a bronze vessel into which their ooze drops from its mouth and the liquid sets and congeals, and if you saw it, you would say that it was gum from an almond tree. So when the snake is dead, they remove the vessel and substitute another, also of bronze. And again, from the dead body, there flows a liquid serum which looks like water. This they leave for three days, and it too sets. But there will be a difference in color between the two, for the latter is a deep black, and the former the color of amber. Now if you give a man a piece of this no bigger than a sesame seed, dropping it into his wine or his food, first he will be seized with convulsions of the utmost violence. Next, his eyes squint and his brain dissolves and drips through his nostrils, and he dies a most pitiable death. Horrifying. The Romans believed that those who lived in lands um, that were home to venomous bugs or snakes or other animals had at least some level of immunity to these poisons. To, that, to the point that it is said that sometimes the natives could just breathe on or salivate on a snake bite and it would be cured. This rumor probably came about <laughs> because the natives in those regions were really experienced in curing and sucking out poisons. So any foreigner who would have seen it would have thought something magical was going on with these people. Like, how are they so good at this? As for who used poison, the Gauls used aconite, um, they also used hellebore and henbane to poison their arrows. 
Um, the Celts are known to have used USAP on their arrows, as well as Hellebore. It's a little difficult to tell if the Greeks commonly used poison on their arrows. There's not exactly a source that I found that directly states instant instances where they use these. There are as I mentioned before, tales of Greek heroes using poison on their weapons. I don't know, those could have been very well a later addition, maybe a Roman addition to the stories. They definitely don't seem to happen in the original myths. In the Iliad, I don't believe we see Achilles using poison. I believe that was a later edition. But they definitely did know a lot about poison. There are different effects. Um, it is likely that they used them in some capacity. Maybe it wasn't so much dipping their arrows uh, or in a military sense, but there are accounts of them Funny enough, using poison as a treatment for mental health and other small health problems, it's remarkable that, that anybody survived from these things. They did poison wells, and the Romans did this too. This was a little controversial, you can imagine, especially in Rome, this was controversial. Everyone seemed to have a different opinion on poison. Florus, the Roman author, did not appreciate the poisoning of wells. <laughs> um, he berated a general for doing this in Asia. Tacitus thought, like most other contemporaries, that using psychological warfare in a creative way was respectable, being clever um, with your tactics, but not necessarily to the extent of just flat out poisoning an enemy. That wasn't cool. For the most part, that wasn't cool. There was also completely opposite opinions on the matter. The Roman military strategist and writer Vegetius said that it is much better to overcome the enemy by famine, surprise, or terror than by general actions, for in the latter instance, fortune has often a greater share than valor. So did people in antiquity use poison for military purposes? Yes, but the exact extent to which they use them is up for debate. It's not something that's hugely covered in ancient sources. For the most part, yes, Romans and Greeks were both known to use poison. Uh, they were known to poison wells. During the plague in Athens, the Athenians actually accused the Spartans, who had them trapped in their own city at the time, of poisoning their wells and causing this plague. As with most everything. There were varied opinions on poisoning in the ancient world. You could find many people who agreed with it, you could find many people who did not agree with it. The general consensus of the Romans and Greeks, though, seems to be that it was dishonorable to use poison in most circumstances. If a person did use poison, it seemed as if they usually felt the need to defend their decision to use the substance. But yeah, that wraps up another video, my friends. Would you have used poison if you were an ancient? I don't know. I might have. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Have a good life. Bye. Um. Whoa, what? <laughs> I have to call for jury duty today. I completely forgot about that. When did this chair start squeaking? That details how did I just get really bright? And that's how Achilles died. Achilles? <laughs> he was Achilles! <laughs> Have I always been this bright? <laughs> I'm not honestly sure. Oh, fucker. I'm so sick of.